I've been lucid dreaming for many years. My tulpa started out just being a dream friend. She was so real, independent, like a separate consciousness that I needed to somehow take her out of the dream world. So I updated her to tulpa status. This, as I've been told, unusual and difficult approach to making a tulpa has proven to be really exciting and fun and has made me learn a lot along the road. I think there's many benefits on the use of lucid dreams to get closer to your tulpa. I've decided to make this guide on how to lucid dream and how to get in touch with your tulpa in the dream world with various tips to make the best of it. In this first section, we are going to be co covering the how to lucid dream quick guide section. A. How to lucid dream. Quick guide. A0. About this guide. And useful links. The purpose of this guide is to give you a quick overview of what lucid dreams are and common practices to start having them. Since, since there's a lot of in-depth information about lucid dreams out there, I'll try to give a more personal, simple, and concise introduction to lucid dreaming in this text. If you are interested and want to do further research on the subject, check out the following links. Dream Views, amazing and complete website devoted to lucid dreaming with lots of detailed guides and very useful forms. Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming, a fantastic book by Stephen L... I'm not going to pronounce that. Father of Lucid Dreaming Scientific Research. A1. What is a lucid dream? Basically, it's a dream in which you are aware you're dreaming, and you retain consciousness, which in turn makes the dream world very vivid and realistic. If you're lucid while dreaming, you can also achieve greater control over the dream, ultimately being able to change the whole dream world as you please. You may probably have experienced one or two lucid dreams already, since in normal circumstances, people have a few lucid dreams during their lifetimes. With some practice and a bit of patience, you can achieve having several lucid dreams every night. A2. Dream Recall. The first important step is to be able to remember your dreams. What's the point in having an awesome lucid experience if it vanishes from your memory just as you wake up? That's why I suggest starting a dream journal first. Keep a notebook and pen or electronic device just beside your bed or under your pillow. Before falling asleep, concentrate for a while on convincing yourself you're going to write everything you can remember from your dream as soon as you wake up. If you wake up and remember nothing, don't worry. If you can remember just a con concept, I object or idea, write it down. Write down as much as you can. You should also write about emotions, smells, sounds, textures, memories that the dream evoked. Don't focus on just the events that happened. It could also help to remain a minute or two motionless with your eyes closed and carefully reconstruct the dream backwards in time before writing any anything down. This is a bit tedious, I know, but it pays off. In, in just a couple weeks, if you're persistent, you'll start remembering full dreams and filling several pages each night. Although a dream journal is not really a must to successfully lucid dream, it can be really helpful. Apart from increasing your dream recall, it makes you more aware about your senses and thoughts through those detailed descriptions, eventually making it easier to discern when you're dreaming. A3, techniques to induce lucid dreams. There are many different techniques and practices that can increase your probabilities of having a lucid dream. The key is to try as many as possible and find those that are most effective for you. Many of them might not work the first couple times or not work at all. So don't worry too much about failure and just experiment and have fun with them 
until you find the set of techniques that suits you the best. A31, the reality check. A reality check is basically asking to yourself if you're dreaming while awake. Ideally, you should do them regularly, every 5, 10, 30 minutes during the day so you trigger them automatically when you're dreaming. Also, you should just avoid just remembering, am I dreaming, like a parrot. Each time you do a reality check, you should take a moment to carefully examine your surroundings and recent memory. What was I doing five minutes ago? What was I going to do next? And see if anything is odd or out of place, meaning that you could be dreaming. This technique, used by many lucid dreamers, doesn't particularly work for me. So I'll instead share my own way of doing a reality check, which is very simple and in my case, very powerful. While awake, you probably never question if you're dreaming ever. But in dreams, you might always have a slight doubt. The only thing you need to do is learn to identify that doubt, even if it's almost insignificant. You need to convince yourself that anytime this happens, anytime you think you might be dreaming, even if it's just a little, you're definitely dreaming. A32, Dream Signs. Once you've filled lots of pages in your dream journal, you might notice that some elements or themes appear frequently in your dreams. It could be people from your childhood, cars driving at unreasonable speeds, water elevators. Try to identify them and do reality checks every time you encounter these signs during the day. Try to associate these signs with thoughts about dreams. This way, whenever you encounter those signs inside a dream, you'll have a better chance of asking to yourself if you might be dreaming and become lucid. By doing this, you're also giving very special attention to those signs, which in turn will probably increase the chances of them appearing in future dreams. And consequentially, the chance of becoming lucid. Because of this, I recommend choosing only neutral or positive signs that you like the most. This way, you won't be bothered if these signs start showing up frequently in your dreams. A33, dream cycles. As you might know, we dream in cycles, which consist of a long period of deep sleep followed by a short period of REM sleep, when we usually dream. These cycles get shorter and shorter, and the REM periods closer and closer together, the more hours you've been sleeping. So you have better chances of becoming lucid early in the morning. A common practice for beginners is to try to wake up two or three hours before the time you normally wake up. Stay awake for a couple minutes, thinking about what you're going to do in the dream, repeating to yourself you're going to be lucid, reading books or forms about lucid dreams, etc. Doing this before going back to sleep will increase your chance of becoming lucid, as you'll enter the REM sleep faster and better retain consciousness having been awake for a while concentrated in lucid dreams. Many lucid dreamers will say that you should avoid using alarm clocks as they can disrupt the sleep mid-cycle, which will make you wake up tired and make it really difficult to recall previous dreams. I've used them, however, to train myself to wake up several times during the night, every 90 minutes or so. When I, beca- when I became used to it, even with no alarms, I was waking up several times, just as I finished a dream, helping me recall many more dreams and giving me more opportunities to try lucid dreaming techniques. A34, false awakening. When you wake up for a dream, many times you woke up inside another dream. You may even dream about dressing up, having breakfast, going to work, until you wake up for real and realize the whole day was just a dream. Don't you hate it when this happens? False awakenings can be a really powerful tool to induce lucidity. Start doing reality checks 
every time you wake up. So you trigger them also during a false awakening. Being so common, even more after a lucid dream, you'll be gen- greatly increasing your chances of becoming lucid. A35, wake-induced lucid dreams. The wake-induced lucid dream, or wild technique, is probably the hardest one, but also the most powerful. Every successful WILD attempt will put you directly in a lucid dream right from the start. There are many different ways to do this technique, so I'll focus here on my own personal way of of doing it. If you want to know more, Check this dream views form on the wake induced uh, lucid dream technique. What you want to do is remain conscious as the body is falling asleep. The best time to do this is again in the morning, during the late hours of sleep when you enter REM cycles easily. Also during naps. To do this technique, you should avoid moving any part of your body. Pick a comfortable position first and ignore any signs from your brain that makes you want to change position or scratch something that suddenly itches. Ignoring these signals can make you feel tense or nervous, making it impossible to fall asleep. If you can't ignore the signals and you must change position, position, do it. Just try to remain as calm and relaxed as possible while being as motionless as possible and without giving too much attention to your body. Try to repeat some phrase to yourself or count from 100 to 0, slowly so your mind stays focused and conscious. If that doesn't work, just imagine a story as complex as possible, picturing every detail. It could be the dream you want to enter next. If everything goes as planned, after a while you might feel a little bit dizzy and overall numbness on your body as it actually starts to fall asleep. Don't panic. The feeling is really weird, and you might want to get excited or scared and fail the wake-induced lucid dream instantly. By all means, try to stay calm and just think about the dream you want to enter. You can picture yourself falling down through your bed into a tunnel whatever keeps your imagination running and conscious. If everything goes right, at some point you will step into the imagination that flows in front of your mind's eye, entering the dream directly. Even after many years of training, I can't do wake-induced lucid dreams consistently every day. So don't worry if you fail many times. It's a really hard technique. A4, inside the dream. If you've attempted some sort of lucid dream technique, chances are you've already got your first lucid dream, but it probably wasn't that rewarding. Usually, when we realize this is a dream, the whole dream world becomes suddenly more crisp and colorful, becoming more and more vivid than your usual experience of reality. Sadly, you usually are too excited when this happens, and you just wake up. And even if you manage to stay calm, the dream fades away in just a couple seconds. That's completely normal. Roughly speaking, your brain is not used to being conscious while dreaming. So, whenever it detects you're conscious, it wakes you up instantly. Don't worry. As you lucid dream more and more, your lucid dream times will gradually get longer, and you'll probably develop your own tricks to remain a bit more in the dream. A41, staying longer in the dream. Tricks to keep dreaming while lucid differ from one person to another, but there are some that seem universally helpful. Anyway, you should try to develop your own for best results. Number one, looking at something closely, touching it, rubbing your hands, and in general, focusing on a detail of the scene for a couple seconds can help stabilize the dream and prevent you from waking up. Another method, if the dream starts to get blurry and you feel like you're about to wake up, spin. 
The spinning motion somehow tricks your brain not to wake up. It is also a good trick to teleport you to another dream scene quickly. Another way, if you wake up into a false awakening, you might become lucid again and continue with the dream right where you left off. By chaining dreams this way, you can achieve lucid times of about an hour or more. A42, retaining lucidity. Another problem when you have your first lucid dream experiences is that you usually lose lucidity. You become distracted with something in the dream world and suddenly you are going with the dream again, losing the lucid state and reverting to a normal dream. While lucid, you should always try to repeat to yourself that you're dreaming from time to time, even if you're just watching the dream go on by itself as a passive spectator. If you have thought about doing something specific in the dream before going to sleep, try to focus on it. And if something in the, dream, in the dream tries to distract you, just ignore it and concentrate hard on your goals. A43, memory while lucid. While lucid, your mind might not function exactly as it does when awake. Lucidity is not an on-off state. If you're just mildly lucid, your sense of what's logical or not might be a bit more tolerant. You are more prone to distractions and your memory might be hard to access. If you have thought of something you want to do in your next lucid dream, it's a good practice to repeat to yourself several times what are your goals for your next lucid dream just before falling asleep. This will also help you remember the dream better as you'll recall if the dream were successfully completed or not. And once your dream goals are completed, it could be a good idea to try and wake up so you can remember the dream even better being closer in time. A44, dream control. The dream world will mostly change based on your expectations. If you want to fly, but you doubt a little that you can fly, you probably won't go far up into the air. The key is to convince yourself that anything is possible in a dream and to use your imagination to visualize in detail how it could be possible. You need to be sure that you can fly and you need to clearly imagine how it feels to be flying. Definitely harder than it looks. You have to fight against your firmly established subconscious expectations about how reality works. You can, however, trick yourself to overcome these difficulties in various ways. If you can't make something appear, your tulpa for instance, convince yourself that they are already behind you. Look down for their shadow or talk to them as if they were there. If you can't go somewhere, use a door as a portal do the spinning trick from before, or just turn back and believe that you're already there. In general, if something isn't there, just assume it's behind you. It's easier to make things appear outside of your field of vision. If you can't do something, for instance, having a superpower, you could think of a magical object that makes you capable of doing it, which is nearby, on the floor, or that you already have in your pocket. The key is to be creative and use your imagination to make your mind more open to believe what's going on. 